What do the rich buy that the poor don't even know is available for purchase? Time. All that crap you do. Commuting. Grocery shopping. Cooking. Cleaning your house. Waiting on hold. Paying bills. All those chunks of your life that are eaten up by minutiae. Rich people buy out of all that routine garbage. Time is all you really get in your life. Rich people buy it back. This is the answer. No need to scroll. Even Warren Buffet and Bill Gates do whatever they can to get back time. The only commodity that is finite. No, I'm pretty sure poor people know rich people can buy services. The poor people are usually the one performing the services. The rich buy time and the poor sell it. A platinum retriever. And here I am with my bronze retriever. I don't see it on here, but the vast majority of financial products are out of reach for all but the rich. One reason the rich get richer is that they have access to investments that we've never heard of. Ever seen the big short why do you think Goldman Sachs took a week to correctly price Dr. Michael Burry's housing short position? Because they were securing that position for themselves and their clients. Those financial instruments are so complicated and the regulation on them so Byzantine that it wouldn't surprise me if Goldman actually didn't do anything illegal, like they're allowed, at their discretion, to misprice an asset for a certain period of time. Probably under the guise of the assets being complicated to price, but really it's just a buffer for them to get an edge that regular people couldn't believe. Imagine going to a horse race and being able to bet on the horses near the end of the race. Rich people get that. Poor people. This is basically how Dubai was built almost overnight. Specialized household staff. When someone is truly mega rich, running their household takes the same complexity as running a small to mid-sized company, and management is skilled and compensated accordingly. Don't think butler or think head of operations at a luxury hotel. The stuff that household managers oversee can be really specialized as well. For example, Larry Ellison has his own personal curator to oversee his collection of Asian art. They do things like advise on the purchase and sale of art in his collection, oversee storage and display of art housed on his property, oversee process of lending art for storage and display at museums. The curator will often have their own staff to conduct actual conservation work, art transport, art installation, etc. So if you've already got an in-house crew of 7 people focused on your art collection alone, imagine how big your entire household staff is. That's why you've got a household manager. Private performances with big name artists. I was on a yacht in the Virgin Islands and some mega yacht owner pretty close to us had Christina Aguilera flown in to perform for his guest on the mega yacht. We were close enough to see the performance, not close enough to pretend to be part of the party. I saw an interview with Penn from Penn and Teller talk about doing a private show on a yacht for one of the Microsoft guys. They paid to shut down Fire Vegas show for a week, flew Penn Teller and their crew to Asia put them up for a week on a luxury yacht and had them do one show for Fire Friends. T here was a couple of big name bands on this cruise as well. Something they do that most people don't know about is buy entire libraries at once. My sister used to work at a bookstore, and told me someone came in and wanted to furnish their library with a library size purchase of books. They just wanted cherry picked bestsellers left to the discretion of the people working there. It sounded wild. Some wealthy people also buy books as decoration, with no intent of reading most of them. They buy books from wholesalers by the linear foot, specifying how the books look on the shelves, size, color, material of spine. ETC, without any regard for what the books actually are. They just need to fill wall space and library office rooms in their homes. Landing 747S in small airports. I grew up around Lexington, KY. The region is huge on horses, particularly thoroughbred horses. The entire city is surrounded by horse farms, and these farms breed some of the best racing horses in the world. The rich and famous will often come here to buy thoroughbreds to add to their breeding stock. One such person is a Shia from Dubai, I think, who owns his own private 747. Now the local airport isn't rated for a 747S, and it's not legal to land one there unless it's an emergency. The Shia doesn't care though and lands his 747 there anyways. The airport finds him every time he does this, 
which he is totally fine with paying. I've been told that many of the upgrades to the airport over the years were almost entirely funded with money from those fines. In London rich people figured out it was cheaper to just park on the streets illegally and just pay the fines every day than to pay for parking in the city. So the city started clamping cars, so the rich people started paying people to go and pay the fine for the car to be unclamped before they wanted to leave. Entire floors of hotels or multiple floors. Entire restaurants. Chefs from literally any restaurant in the world to cook for them, wherever they are. I saw all of those things done by a prince of Saudi Arabia. We estimated it cost him $50,000 just for the one private meal in our restaurant, given that he had the top four floors of our hotel booked for the hundreds of staff to take care of him, his wife and his two kids, plus likely some concubines, if I'm being honest. As someone in this part of the world, being rich equals the number of people who work for you. He paid $30k just to close our restaurant for one meal. Flew his favorite chef from New York to Orlando to cook for him, on his private jet, and then back again. Of course, it was likely the other private jet he had just for his staff, not for himself or his family. Make food our entire staff, all the kitchen staff, all the federal, state and local security and him, his wife and his two kids. I have posted the entire story somewhere else in the past, but I couldn't find it easily. I had a buddy who taught ski lessons to another Saudi prince's little kid and had some nearly unbelievable and yet similar details during his interactions with them. That kid had an entire team around him or probably 10 staff, plus vehicles, snowmobiles, a helicopter, and so on. I later met a guy who worked on an ultra luxury 300 foot yacht and served Bill Gates and his wife, among other super rich people. Their primary job was to operate without interacting with them, or at least as little as possible. This shows you, in some sense, that having people around you doing stuff you need to be done but doing it invisibly is another perk of being rich. Private Jet Timeshares for those not quite rich enough for their own private jet, or those rich people wanting to be a bit frugal. More often, it's because they want the option to get different jets. Flying with my wife, small jet will do. Flying 20 of my friends to my island. Luxury Ice Cubes Gloss Luxury Ice Co. produces perfectly square ice blocks for minimum dilution and maximum cooling. Hand carved and completely clear, these cubes are sold in bags of 50 and each bag costs $325. You can buy houses ready to move in only with a suitcase. These houses are more than fully equipped. Everything is already there like the whole furniture, glasses, knives, forks, spoons, tissues and toilet paper, towels, toys and games for the children etc. Kidnapping insurance. I worked for a major company that had employees in sketchy places, war zones. We had a blanket K and R, kidnap and ransom, policy for every employee. Basically, if any employee was kidnapped they'd pay out X millions to professional negotiators to try and free us. I never got a chance to use it, partially because I worked in Virginia the whole time. You think your platinum card is cutting it? Please. Centurion is the way to go. It'll cost 10 grand just to get one, initial fee to join and the first annual fee, but you get everything. The Crystal Method are playing a local venue and you want to go backstage and shoot the shit with Scott Kirkland because you're interested in donating to his favorite causes, because you've always admired the guy, his political opinions, and his music? That can be arranged. Want a table at Schwa in Chicago, Ian Vegas, Schloss Schoenstein in First Anor, or Eragor in Tokyo? They'll get you in tomorrow. Need a full itinerary planned for a week in Paris? Need that new iPhone on day one but don't want to stand in line? Want to stay at the most luxurious place in Ibiza for the days Pete Tong is at the Blue Marlin? They do this in their sleep. It's a butler and concierge and local expert and best friend that knows a guy you'll ever meet. All just a call away. College admissions for their kids. Politicians. Secret trapdoors with hidden rooms. What mansion doesn't come with these standard come on? For most people, a car is a depreciating asset. From the moment you buy it, it starts to go down in value. For ultra wealthy car collectors, 
they are able to access limited edition cars that go up in value immediately. For example, McLaren only made 375 P1s that they sold for 1 to 1.5 million dollars, they are now worth easily over 3 million dollars. The challenge is it takes more than just money to get one of these, with only a few hundred models to allocate, and with them immediately earning their owners a profit, the manufacturer will look at a number of criteria to decide who gets one. Including how many models of their regular cars you have purchased. If are offered a Ferrari La Ferrari Aperta for 2.2 million dollars, you probably own 5 plus other Ferraris and you just bought a pair of matching Portofinos for your twins who are going off to college. How many wick wicks could a wick whack if a wick whacking wick could whack wicks? Subscribe to find out.